everybody, it's Paul from Alexander Knife Sharpening and Laser Engraving. When I think back to my sharpening journey, which really got started as a professional full-time sharpener in around 2019, there was a lot of misconceptions and things that I learned and were taught or were told that were just downright wrong. And over time, there were certain things that I started doing that I realized like, hey, th this isn't correct or this is wrong. And it might have been that way 40 or 50 years ago. But with all the great gear and different things we have and different methods, it's not necessarily the case today. But a lot of times those kind of myths kind of carry on. And the one that always comes to mind is serrated knives. When I first started sharpening, almost everybody was under the impression of, oh, you can't sharpen serrated knives. Serrated knives, you can't do them. Nobody does them. Everybody turns them away. It doesn't work. And it just ended up being, you know, one of those things that's completely wrong. You absolutely can sharp, sharpen serrated knives. Yes. Does it take special skills? It does. Does it take different equipment than a lot of the normal things that people sharpen on? Yes, it does. Uh, can people absolutely butcher them? <laughs> And they do, yes, you know, if you try and sharpen a serrated knife like a traditional knife, all you do is pretty much kind of destroy it over time. But a lot of us do know that there are some great methods for sharpening serrated knives. And I really love the one that I came up with that I've shared with many people. And if you ever go watch some of my videos on my serrated knife method, you'll see there's a ton of positive comments from other sharpeners that are like, yeah, this is great. This works great for me. Um, and that's what I want to talk about this right here and another one that I have a pull pile of. So for the longest time, I turned away these like Henkel Eversharp knives with the little teeny tiny micro teeth. And the other one that I used to turn away all the time, but I don't so much anymore because this one I have had success doing is... Cutco double D knives, which is a very unique serration. I mean, let's face it, it's a squared serration, but I have successfully sharpened those for people. And I think we can very easily get into a mindset of like, oh, no, you know, that can't be done. That can't be done. And that kind of spreads. And then everybody thinks, oh, it can't be done. And I kind of feel that might be the case with these. So I have a set here. They are dull, but I think that we can sharpen it. And I think that my method of sharpening serrated knives, I believe will work for this. And let's find out. So we'll see, you know, it's going to be tough to test, but I think we will uh, probably be able to figure out a, some ways to test this to see if, uh, you know, if we did improve it. So we'll try a best test. Maybe, maybe we'll do like an average of three on it um, and then go from there. But I'm going to give this a shot to see if we're just like turning money away and that, you know, hey, maybe we should be sharpening these. Maybe there's no reason why we can't sharpen these. So that's that's the thought. So I have these. I have a whole bunch of uh, Cutco's and that's what we're going to do in this video is see, hey, can we sharpen these and bring them back and make it worthwhile for someone to pay us to sharpen some Henkel's Ever Sharp knives or Cutco Double D knives. All right, so that's the goal. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you, I have the flat side of this knife down. So my theory is, and this is what I found to be the case with most serrated knives, and if you look right here, you can see that the apex of this knife, that the burr, I generally find on a lot of serrated knives, it when they go dull, it's rolled over to one side or the other. And by, many times, it has rolled over to the flat side. And that's what I'm seeing a, a definite indicator here of, to me, this looks to me like the tip of that knife has rolled over to the flat side. Some of them I think have just clear broken off but I think that a lot of them, that sharp part of that knife has just rolled over and it's all on the flat side of this knife now. So we're just going to keep 
kind of scanning our way down here. And that's what it looks like to me. So there's the little flat cutouts where it has. Every so often these little, they have like a little flat section where it's not just teeth. But you can see a lot of these teeth are damaged. We got broken teeth, missing teeth that you, you could not see this with the naked eye. If you looked at this under just your regular eye, they actually don't look like they're not little points. Uh, it's very difficult to see that. Really like to examine this stuff. Now, we're getting a little bit closer down to the tip area. I'm now at the front part of the knife. And you can see we got a little bit better little mountain peaks down here. So in the back there, we had a lot of really broken tips. And there's another little flat. And now we're getting towards the very tip. That's just a piece of wood that I'm sliding this on. I like to elevate the knife and just slide it across there. And we are getting very close to the tip. And this is our tip right here. So we've just hit the tip. So there's the tip of our knife. So my theory that I want to test on this that I think is going to work is that I think we should do this in the same process that I tend to do regular serrated knives. I think we should take as close to a zero angle on that flat side as possible and see if we can pull those teeth up. And then I think we should get in here. Once we've raised the burr, I think we should get in here and with a wire wheel on a Dremel, knock that burr back down. And then I think we should go about removing that burr and see if it dramatically increases this knife. Next step, let's do a test of this knife in, let's do three places. We'll do up here by the tip, in the middle, and down at the lower end. We'll try a best test and see what we're getting for kind of an average for the overall of this knife and see if we can improve its performance after we attempt to sharpen it. Okay, so you can see I have marked three spots on this knife so that we can hit relatively the close, as close as we can get to the same three spots as we test this knife on our best tester. Oh, I got a little log book so I can write down the scores. Here's the knife. You can see we got the three marks. I actually have uh, three uh, test medias. So we will do a, a self setting one on the first two and on the last one we'll do the uh, preloaded and we'll do one two three and then we'll do the same thing after we attempt to sharpen this and see if we can make it better all right so let's get started so we're going to take our first test media we're going to tear it out i'm going to put here one two three and let's get going all right so let's start with test one so we're gonna have to move this in a lot closer if we're gonna be able to test that mark there we go okay let me tear that out Six ninety one. Six hundred and ninety one on the first one. All right, let's move this down. We'll go with our test number two and tear it out. Get this lined up for test two. Okay, teared. 301, so 301 in the middle, and we're going to use the recording a video. And we'll do test number three. 
I always like to do a cut test. This might be a little difficult with this knife, but I'm just going to do it, you know, and let's see how it feels. It's definitely cutting, which I would expect with 300. And this one, you're probably just going to have to take my word for it. It's funny, it seems to get caught every time right around here in the middle on the front of this knife. Yep, there it goes again. But yeah, cutting, not super great, but definitely cutting, uh, which is definitely makes sense for, uh, you know, the three uh, being around 300. All right, so let's go on to the uh, sharpening and see if we can make this better. I usually like to run somewhere around 1500. Uh, it's running at like 1900, that's fine. I might go a little bit slower. I'll go around 1500 when I do serrations. And I can usually see on bigger serrations the burr forming. It might be a little harder on these because these are tiny. My angle is almost flat. I'm really just trying to pull up what's rolled over onto the other side there. At least that's my speculation for what's going on here with these. Let's see. Just a little shine there. They are just super, super small. I don't want to lose the teeth. I'm really just trying to fix them, restore them by pulling that burr up, getting it back to the other side. There we go. Now I'm going to work on each one of these little flats. Which I can definitely see has a burr. Okay, so after sharpening and uh, pulling that burr back up, what I then like to do is knock it back again to the other side using a Dremel tool or Fordham tool with a basic wire wheel on it. It gets in there uh, very nicely and it has a very nice honing effect. And I will just simply go right down and you'll see the little reflection come off of that knife. It doesn't take a whole lot. And I just knock that right off. And that's all it needs. So the next part is just the uh, leather strop. I like to use the wheel for these. You will see the burr starting to come off. If you have some stubborn parts, which you sometimes will get, typically that means you need to raise the angle a tiny bit. So I will start going across. I will usually see that burr. And I apologize, this is a hard uh, spot to shoot in my shop. Okay, so as you do this, you'll see the foily burr being pulled forward. And little parts of it, you will literally see them flying off, flicking right off. If you get a tough section where they tend not to come off, usually adjusting the angle a tiny bit higher and maybe pressing just a little bit more is usually all it needs. And that's usually all you need to do. Okay, and just to show you what I'm doing here, I'm just hitting this bevel, this primary bevel, and I just repolishing up what I touched with the abrasive. And this is still going 
edge trailing. At one micron, which is like 14,000 grit, and you'll see it's going to put a beautiful shine on the back side of that knife. All right. So that's enough of that. Let's go do our uh, best test and see if it helped. So let's start by taking a quick look under the scope. Wow. Look, look at that. I mean, I think you guys can instantly see how improved and nice and rounded little peaks those scallops are. It didn't file them down flat. I mean, before they were, the tops were missing. And look at them. They look great. I mean, they really look drastically improved. So that explains the grabbiness. It has definitely helped the peaks of those scallops. So let's see if it made it sharper all around, but they, they look entirely better. Let's take a look at the other side. Yeah, it looks, they look good. I mean, they look nice and clean. They look nice and honed. There's our little mark, you can see. I mean, they really, yeah, it really looks good. All right, so let's see, uh, let's see what the best tester tells us. Okay, we're good there. Retearing. 271. So pretty good, because we were at 691. So 271. All right. So test two, the middle of the knife. Let's get her lined up. We are right there. Okay. We're teared. Two ninety. So not a huge improvement, but we definitely improved. We were at 301 and just 290. So we came down 10. It's not a huge improvement, but it's at least a somewhat of improvement. But like I said, keep in mind, the other thing with this is we have all these little tiny spots that would be very different. So whether we're hitting a point, whether we're hitting in the serration, but let's keep going. So, so far I'm still happy with what I'm seeing here. All right, so here's our last test. It's gonna be this last spot. All right, let's tear that out. Two thirteen, and we were at two ninety eight. So we're at two thirteen. So that's that is a overall very good improvement, especially in the front part of that knife where we were at 691, and it's very clear from looking at it under the microscope that those scallops and the little peaks on this knife, we have completely restored those, and it feels grabby again. Like before I, I was when I first got this out, I was not concerned at all about running my finger down it. Now, I don't want to run my finger down this. It is very grabby and, and it feels very sharp. And all right, so I'll do a, uh, a cut test here. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely cutting better overall. I, I have no problem with, uh, with sharpening this. I really don't. So give it a try for yourselves and see what you think. Uh, but that is the uh, Henkel's Ever Sharp that most people think you can't sharpen. And I think um, I think that's a misconception. So I, we saw 100, almost a 100-point improvement on the third spot, only 10 on the middle, um, and an easy over 300-point improvement on the tip. And I think it's pretty clear from 
the video of the digital microscope that that knife is in much better shape than it was when it came in but we'll continue to do some more testing on some others all right sharpener so here is my option number two that i think you might want to try and i'm also doing this video so because i'm i want to encourage all of you to go and test test this too try it out see what you think let me know what your results are and get back to me and tell me if you think it's a good method. Okay, so that completes the uh, first knife. I've decided to break this video into segments because quite frankly, it would end up being well over an hour and people just aren't gonna uh, watch it. So I'm gonna do each knife as its own segment. So the first section uh, will be this Henkel's Ever Sharp. Uh, then I'm gonna do a Cutco and then uh, maybe some other different uh, serrated knife. So that's it. Uh, look for the other knives in this collection in other videos. So at the very end of this video, you will see a few things pop up on the screen. One is to subscribe to the channel. Please do so if you haven't done already. Another one is I just figured out how I can put a link in there. So I will put a link into the list of all the tools that I have in my shop, which I am quite often asked for, so that'll pop up as well. And it should also give you a recommended video of mine based on your viewing option.